assessment techniques ortho myo neuro manual therapy am and md assessment techniques for glenohumeral humeral joint the shoulder joint interactive question and answer session which uh, we see the queries received from the participants okay. for example in locking position how many times we can give the compression and distractions for any kind of contraction also even dynamic rotator stability test also contraction is there okay how many contractions you can give okay and uh, progressions are there in the scapular plane caption i am taking it different positions so how many positions it has to be there whether it is 5 or it is 10 okay and uh, i'll tell you more mathematics okay but don't worry about the mathematics i have been always been telling okay we are not a mathematician we are clinicians okay so think in terms of which one is provoking at that position you keep it okay and you are got the provoking position the contraction is there there itself you maintain the contraction how long you will maintain the contraction okay beyond 30 seconds nobody can maintain the contraction if we are giving even 10 percentage contraction also okay don't hold beyond uh, for a longer time okay one and a half minutes is the length and the time if the good endurance is there okay otherwise you can't maintain that okay so these are all human capabilities if it's an athlete they can take it more uh, sustained contraction for a longer period of time okay and uh, so that's very very important there and uh, when you are giving compression distraction also it's only assessment for assessment why repetitions okay you are going to get symptom either with compression or distraction maintain that that's all because we are combined loading and we are trying to palpate we are trying to contract okay i am telling internal and external rotation does not mean that you give five contraction for internal rotation 10 contractions for external rotation nothing like that okay it's only once only once you have got the symptom in one position in one direction contraction, your assessment is done. Okay. And after that, you are going to use the similar contraction for combined provocation when you are giving the treatment. Okay. Whether the glide also, for example, an anterior glide with the uh, external retard contraction or internal rotational contraction. Okay. If any one is going to produce the combined provocation, so that means you are going to utilize the same for the treatment. And you are going to give the same glide there. Okay. So that's where the uh, what to say the simplicity of the assessment to treatment the translation is there okay transition okay so don't uh, go with the mathematics okay even in treatment also remember how many times you will give mobilization okay we have uh, learned in conventional passive movements the 30 repetitions and then give three sets 90 repetitions and all those things okay that is relaxed passive movement which is rhythmically given okay when you are uh, seeing Maitland's uh, joint mobilization individually, it's only half hertz. That means one cycle, one second, another cycle, another second. Okay, that means you are giving a glide, one second, coming back is another second. Two seconds duration, one glide has to be there. But here we are not doing that. We are only. You should be aware that we are maintaining, but not at the grade three. Okay, where the tissue stop is there you are maintaining in the mid range okay that the, before the grade two okay so there you are maintaining so you are going to maintain for a longer time okay? it's like a sustained uh, mobilization with movement like how maligan uh, advised okay that's the modification so there is no mathematics there okay what you want to see is in which combination how much loading which tissue is getting provoked or not okay whether it is articular tissue is getting provoked or myofascial or it is neural if it is not getting provoked with the 10 contractions, you will do 20 or 30. Okay, because your hypothesis is with repeated contractions. Okay, and uh, you might sustain the contraction for a longer time, you might sustain the contraction with higher intensity. Okay, same way you suspect it is articular, you will sustain the compression, you will not do repeatedly. Okay, you will sustain the compression. I was showing here repeatedly because you have to. Understand the technique. Okay, yeah. all of you have, do not have the liberty to watch the video. Okay, so you might uh, be difficult to grasp. If I'm even assessment technique which I have demonstrated itself, you might have thought it is too many at a, in a single short frame of time. Okay, but hopefully you had uh, all the three of you who are attending now have taken the videos also. So you are going to definitely get a good uh, uh, deeper understanding when you watch the videos again after the attending live. Okay, so 
everything you should see together okay and uh, although there are too many okay it is the thinking process that should happen in the mind of the therapist okay why internal rotation is more no during internal rotation why the arm is going in the extension okay that means it's a muscle which extends and internally rotates okay let us mr okay so that should be the process immediately that uh, kind of uh, structure comes then uh, you are going to get what is called as the decision making uh, skill which is more time uh, efficient okay and your uh, error will never come okay it's not a trial and error okay we keep doing assessments we already have a hypothesis strongly that this must be articular primary myofascial secondary and neural tissue okay so in that scenario you have to provoke the articular so with compression if it is not getting provoked you should do the distraction okay if uh, compression also not getting provoked you should do the, the glides with the compression okay if it is frozen shoulder and you are evaluating okay and the same way like uh, if it is instability and then you are evaluating as a long term for am and md you will do the distraction and then you will do the glides okay because ligaments and capsules will be there so you cannot ask how many times the distraction okay so this is a sustained one okay you you may not get a, for example in the first distraction i am doing grade 1 plus okay the second distraction i am doing 2 minus next to 2 then 2 plus okay like that i give the distraction why because i am incrementally loading the tissue when i am distracting okay so that's why i would have done five times okay and also to make you understand the technique repetition okay? when you are evaluating it does not mean that you have to give five six times if patient is uh, you are strongly suspecting that it is a repetitive loading you can give repeatedly compression 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 okay if it is sustained loading patient is telling pain on the side when i was lying down okay uh, six months back now no that means you know it is sustained the compression so you want to reproduce that symptom you have to do the sustained compression only not repetitive okay so it depends on the uh, intervening pathomechanics there yeah. Remember, the internal rotation deficit can be articular or myofascial. Okay, rule of AM and MT to differentiate articular and myofascial is contraction. Okay, so you give hold, relax, and if the range improves, it is muscle tightness. Okay, you give hold, relax, and the range is not improving. Capsule. Okay, end feel will be capsular, end feel will be muscular. Okay, muscular end feel is like a, a elastic recoil. capsular end feel is like abrupt hard stretch okay there won't be recoil okay that is muscle versus capsule and muscles uh, pain will come in the evenings which is more of uh, overuse okay myofascial pain whereas capsule will come as clicks okay if there is capsule adhesion and contracture it will be more of uh, stiffness okay in specific ranges it will be stiff other ranges it will be Uh, what is called as uh, excessive movement okay if posterior capsule tightness is there anterior instability can come okay and it is uh, that kind of an opposite picture will also be there so that's why in anterior instability we might have to stretch the posterior capsule okay and the uh, posterior capsule it can be the posterior cuff also infraspinatus or the teres minor okay how do you differentiate i have told you the infraspinatus position teres minor position okay but if it is posterior capsule It's only this position with the internal rotation and the posterior drawers. Okay, that is the posterior capsule stretching. Okay, uh, what we do in side lying versus what we do in standing. Okay, the sleeper stretch or all this cross uh, hand stretch. All these are for posterior tissues in general. But if I am using this with contractions and I am getting more range again contractions, I am getting more range. Soft tissue tightness. Okay, so. remember the two types of uh, instability okay whenever the instability is there in uh, am and mt evaluation should we stabilize that or should we provoke both can be done okay so but what i suggest is initially you stabilize and then combined provocation you do okay just for safety of the patient and uh, you know that the excellent control is there in the patient motor control activation is present predator cuff stenting is present Dynamic rotator activity is also present. Okay. All this 
you do that with the provocation next one you provoke with the distraction and then the glides okay uh, when the muscle contraction is there okay so that means you are giving the resistance for the rotator cuff okay you are pulling the humerus and asking the person to contract rotator cuff and you are giving challenging force of gliding okay so that is needed then only functionally that kind of challenge will come in any kind of sports activity and the rotator cuff will be active okay the reaction time will be good so you need to do that okay in the later stages of uh, the treatment sessions okay either way evaluation you will always understand that safety of evaluation comes when the stabilizers are active and then you are provoking with the joint play okay the apprehension and relocation but after which without the muscle contraction or the antagonistic muscle contraction okay anterior glide you are contracting external rotators versus the internal rotator mobilizers okay not the rotator cuff so that means that is going to aggravate the dislocation okay with the muscle contraction so those muscles contraction again it is maybe pectoralis major anterior deltoid okay or it might be the uh, anterior leap yeah okay subscapularis will not cause an anterior dislocation okay it's not that much powerful so you have to make sure that combine it provoke it and then you find out okay and uh, make sure that if people having weakness of rotator cuff and when you are activating the rotator cuff if the stability is not proper that means you should first train the stability by distracting and asking the patient to contract the rotator cuff okay i'll come to the treatment anyway okay so our treatment plan will depend upon whether we are diagnosing the patient with rotator cuff activation with the activation also are they having instability or without the rotator cuff activation they are having the instability okay so that is the difference there because active instability passive instability both are there okay ligaments related instability is passive okay that is influenced by mobilizer muscles contraction if it is a muscle related instability it is the stabilizer muscles weakness okay the endurance issue which leads to the instability okay so that's why both the components need to be checked and when you check uh, add the neural loading okay and also contraction when you are giving the lights okay specific directions okay so where are we now okay